Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a, uh, a fantastic lunch. Uh, in the final hour or so uh, this afternoon, we have a couple of really fascinating sessions uh, coming up. In just a moment, I'm going to be joined by uh, Craig Foster uh, for a conversation about how to make change, make some enemies, maybe some friends. And so many of you will know Craig as, first of all, uh, a famous Australian soccer or footballer. Many of you will hear his voice still echoing in your head as Australia played in the middle of the night to make World Cup matches. Uh, and more recently, many of you will know Craig for his remarkable work doing advocacy around human rights and, and other issues. And so over the next 10 or so minutes, we're going to have a, a, a bit of a chat. We're going to talk about what it is that all of us can be doing. So please join me in welcoming to the stage, Craig Foster. Hello. Hello everyone, lovely to be here. Hi mate, how are you going? Yeah, good. Now, back home, good to see you. It is, so Craig once gate crashed the Global Citizen Festival. <laughs> um, but Shoot. when we were there, we had this great conversation about making change. And I think the last time we were here together in Melbourne was just before the pandemic. Yeah. And um, you'd just come off the back of running a, a campaign that some of the folks here might be aware of uh, to save Hakeem. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And can you tell us a bit about what Hakeem's up to now? Well, for those who remember it, um, it was five years ago, almost to the day, actually. And the reason I know that is because I met with him yesterday. Uh, so, you know, I can report that he's really going great and his young family uh, has, they has a young son uh, who was born uh, kind of only 18 months after he got out of Bangkok prison. But essentially, um, he, uh, you know, the, the, the impacts of breaches of human rights like that and in that case with Hakeem it was breach of refugee rights and refugee safe travel over to Thailand got imprisoned and and uh, you know several royal families were trying to get him back to Bahrain essentially um, the impact of that is lifelong sadly and so that's why fights for human rights including through sport are so important because once those things occur uh, people live with that impact forever so Tell me, how did you go from being a, a well-known Australian sports broadcaster to someone who is knocking on all the political doors they can find to get Hakeem freed? Well, sport does provide that opportunity. And uh, um, as you heard earlier, I think from Elia and Moana, it, you know, it can be more difficult when people are in their career, but after sporting career, you know, it's super easy. So, more washed up sports stars speaking <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, get in touch, get in touch. Um, uh, yeah, and so, look, um, you know, broadcasting and sport, I, th I think we all uh, have different forms of influence, this different spheres of influence and different levels of influence. You know, your two Hughes, the Aussie Hughes, uh, you know, they use their voice in a very different way through here and, uh, and with Wolverine Hugh in, in other ways as well. But uh, athletes can certainly use the, the profile they have and the recognition that many Australians, often tens of millions of Australians, give them to highlight and amplify important issues that are important to them. I think what's vital is that they anchor that advocacy, or, or what I like to think is, you know, in the kind of sphere of social justice, human rights, and, you know, objective... Uh, principles around how everyone should be treated. And so, you've campaigned on these sorts of issues for years. You went on and you've studied human rights law, and I'd love to understand a bit about what do you think makes for an effective campaign, looking now as not famous Australian Craig Foster, but human rights campaigner Craig Foster. What are you seeing that's that's really moving the needle these days? Well, don't use the word famous. I mean, you guys are working with fam really, like, truly famous people every day, but... Um, so that's a bit unkind, but um, <laughs> I would say that you guys know as well, if not better than anyone, what the power of campaigns are, because that's, you know, really the nexus of what you do, and that is about citizen power, people power, and that's what happened in Hakeem, you know, like, it touched over 30 million people who contributed, and, and what, you, what we know, of course, is that it only takes a small percent of a population, and therefore another population, and then a third and a fourth, and all of a sudden you have a movement around the world, and when you have a movement, then decision makers and political, uh, inverted commas, leaders, uh, you know, are bound to listen, because 
uh, as soon as it is going to impact them, and, and by, by the word leaders, I also mean sporting uh, governors, for example. You know, FIFA and IOC and the type of groups that we work with and sometimes against uh, out of necessity, you know, they must listen when enough people come together and say, okay, this is how we feel, this is how we see the future, and you're not aligning with it. So you've got an audience here of, of hundreds of people here in Melbourne, but also the entire global citizen community around okay, the world. Right. What's the role that you think sport should be playing in advancing human rights in the next few years? If you were going to go, hey, here's one thing I want to see sport stepping up to do. Well, all sports should have human rights policies and it should see, you know, it's kind of uh, social programs and campaigns through that lens. And what that does is it creates a, an objective set of standards by which uh, sport can hold itself to and therefore hold its member countries to as well. And that's most important. Uh, uh, typically, what sport does is say, well, you know, you have the commercial relationships and the political re relationships, and those, uh, you know, matrices, of course, are very, very complex. Uh, however, uh, it, it wavers, you know, uh, uh, kind of in regard to how difficult the issue is or, you know, whether it affects a sponsor or whether it affects important players, and, and that's the one thing I don't like. Um, what we should be able to do or should be capable of doing is just saying, look, this is w the, the, you know, this is how refugees should be treated uh, and this is how women should be treated and this is the rights of children and people should have housing and food and people shouldn't be in extreme poverty. Like, it's crazy that that happens in 2024. Uh, and we stand for these uh, basic, really fundamental principles and we'll do whatever it is through sport. That means raising the alarm, utilising athlete voice, are utilising all of the clubs and all of our brands to make sure that not just sport, but the world understands that this is what we stand for. So you're, you're painting a picture here of a, of a pretty big tent um, that involves lots of people, but you're not always going to agree with everyone. Um, so I want to just pose a, a question to you. You're chair of the Australian Republican. Co-chair, yes, I am, yeah. yes, proudly. Today we're joined by uh, Sarah, Duchess of York. Okay, great. Is she here? <laughs> uh, she, she's actually, she's backstage. Oh, okay. She's on in, in just right. a little bit. <laughs> so I want to know, right, you guys are maybe on different sides. Well, actually, that's not true, but go on. I think it's fair to say the Daily Mail <laughs> thinks that you guys might have different positions on yeah. things. How do you, when you're talking about these big picture ideas, how, how do you talk, how do you build a bridge with, with someone who might be pretty differently inclined yeah, great question. to you? Lovely, thank you. Who am I talking to? Am I talking to all the UK here? Am I talking to <laughs> like all of the Commonwealth here? Am I talking to? Um, look, it's really simple. The reason I'm, you know, apart facetiously saying, but actually we're not on the different sides, is because um, to a large degree we're not. In other words, people see the Australian Republic um, and our full independence. That means having an Australian as our own head of state, which is something incredibly ins inspiring. It, actually, it's one of unquestionably the most important and aspirational, inspirational moves that this country will ever make, right? So, and one of the reasons is that everyone, I'm assuming most of you are Australians, that everyone in this room or your children or grandchildren should have the right to aspire to be head of state. Um, thank you for giving me the platform for a great pitch to these <laughs> hundreds of people, that's wonderful. How long do I have? Uh, and what that means is that that person in a multicultural nation should be able to be of any cultural background, or our almost 300, any uh, faith background, that person should really represent us and we think should also, of course, be Australian. Now, the reason it's not a rejection is because we're saying thank you in, in some ways, you know, with... Uh, 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 the United Kingdom and, and with Fergie, as you say, we are brother and sister. We do have a shared history, um, but it's time for Australia to leave and go our own way. And we should be able to do that with a handshake and with a hug. Not, it's not a rejection. This is, this is not about uh, the royal family per se, and it's not even about monarchies, but it's about us. It's about the time for Australia to make this step S ourselves. That's why we're so excited about it. And you can all go to republic.org.au Excellent Go to join pitch. and become a supporter and member. Thank you. <laughs> so let me come back. Let me come back to, to, to a question that, that you slightly avoided while doing a very good pitch. <laughs> What's your message to the young leaders here who are knocking on doors of people who are not always yeah. responding positively great. or who feel like the, the young people might feel like they're in opposition to? Yeah, great. That's, uh, okay, so that you did ask me that question. You're right. Thank you for the reminder. Um, 
Uh, so the, the key, in my perspective, is you have to keep the conversations open and don't attack people for having a different view. And, and the reason I say that is also from a personal level. So, you know, um, you know I'm an anti-racism campaigner and, and, and human rights campaigner and many things. And, you know, my wife will often say to me, listen, just be gentle because, you know, 25 years ago, you weren't talking the same language because you hadn't finished your law degree, you hadn't read all of the work, you hadn't been, and you live in a very different world to many people that you're talking to, and always keep that in mind. We're all on a continuum of a journey of understanding, and uh, most people are inherently good, and but have very strong views, and we shouldn't entrench those. We should keep that space open for us to have a, a, a conversation and a collaboration, and it's important to agree to disagree until we can agree. Fantastic. And a, and a lesson I know, we've got many of our youth leaders in, in the room. I think that right. that sense of how we build that bridge is, is going to be vital. So we're about to run out of time. So I want to throw one very final question uh, to you. What do you think global citizens should be doing on sport? Uh, supporting human rights. I think you, sh you should be championing climate action and some of the big ex existential issues which take a global citizenry to bring to life. We, you know... Um, uh, hundreds of millions of people can be, glo uh, can be uh, collectivized and mobilized by you guys with your platform. Uh, and th through sport, you can reach them in a really effective way. So get sports involved, get all uh, top athletes and former athletes on board, and, and let's go do it. Let's go change the planet. Brilliant. Craig, thank you. Okay. All right. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay. See Fergie. We're excited to be doing more of that here at Global Citizen. Please join me in thanking Craig Foster. Okay.